Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Math 20 2, Chapter 5, Section 1, Exploring Data, Part 3. Now, we've gone over mean, median, and mode for the various businesses. We just did that. Now, let's do a couple more examples. But first, I want to talk about outliers. Not out, comma, liar, and outlier. There's a data point that's off all by itself. So, any outliers in the previous sets of data? Well, as I said, an outlier data point, how should I word that? Doesn't agree with the rest? How do I word that? Data point or value? That's what I was looking for. That does not. agree with the others, with the others, or is way out on its own. So that's my definition of an outlier. So, which measure of central tendency is most affected by outliers? Well, the mean or the average. So we go back here. Yes, you see here the outliers have already I circled them. An outlier. This uh, three hundred and sixty-four thousand dollars for the um, computer resource guy. These ones here, three hundred sixty-two. 245 for the media focus. Those are outliers. Now we can also argue, is this 112,000 an outlier? I don't know. But if we look at these distribution graphs, you go, oh yeah, this is definitely an outlier here. Okay? Now, which measure of central tendency best illustrates the average salary for each company and why. This is one of those you have to explain, choose a number and just or choose a value and explain why. My thought is the median. It's the middle number. Because the outlying outli outlier does not affect it. That's effect. Okay. Now, so far so good. Now, could we talk about the mode instead? Well, we could, but in the previous example, media focus and computer rescue and auto, val auto sales, there was no mode, no most common value. Now, going on here. So. Sorry about that. <sighs> Slides in wrong order. Anyway, so next question. Paulo needs a new battery for his car. He's trying to decide between two different brands. Both brands are the same price. He obtains data for the last, uh, sorry, in years of 15 batteries of each brand as shown below. Measure lifespan batteries. Now, determine the range. Mean. So I want the, the range mean, median mode. Ugh, range mean. Me, ugh, let's just do the averages for these. I'm getting old. All right. So I'm going to pause the video. Actually, no. I'm going to do brand X, then I'm going to pause the video, and I want you to come up with the range, let's do this. Oh, I hate this getting old. Give me the range, mean, mode, median. Brand X. 
and y. So I'm going to do x and you guys can do y. Now, to do brand x, first thing we have to do is put them in order. So to get the uh, median or middle number, we really got to put them in order. Now, let me see. The smallest number is 3.1. 3.3, any, sorry, circle the threes. Any other threes? Nope. On to the fours. Four, three, four, seven. 4.7. Five, 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 five. 5.0. Five point zero, five point one, five point five, five point seven, five point nine. Okay, any other fives? No, on to the sixes. Six, 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 six. six. So I got a six, two. Six point four. Six point six, six point eight. And six point nine. Seven point three. Okay, now, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven. Yes, 5.7 my median. So the median is 5.7. Now the range is my small, my largest minus my smallest, 7.3 minus 3.1, which is 4.2. Now my mean, I plug those numbers into the calculator, I add them all up. I got 5.52 years. Now, and note there was no, or none, no mode, no most common number. Now notice I didn't show you, I didn't write out calculating the range, 7.3 minus uh, 3.1, and I didn't calculate the, show you how I calculated the mean, added them all together and divided them by 15. I, I'm going to pause recording. I want you guys to do the same for brand Y. When you're done, come back and we'll compare answers, okay? Welcome back. When I did the calculations, I got a range of 2.5, a mean of 5.2, the mode is 6.0, there's actually two sixes in there, and the median is 5.8. Now, a few things here. Note, is the mode useful? In this instance, no. There's not enough repeats. Sometimes it's helpful. Now, more important question, which brand would you choose? So, this is one of those choose an answer and justify it questions. There's no right answer, there's no wrong answer. It's how you justify your answer. Now, some people would say brand X is better because the mean or average is a bigger number. 5.5 versus 5.2. But the problem is the range, range of 4.2, which means you get some really crappy ones and you get some really good ones. If you buy a brand X, maybe you get lucky and get one of the good ones that lasts longer. Brand Y, on the other hand, is not, on average, is not quite as good, but the range is much smaller, which means they don't suck, but they're not great. They're always good, consistently good, not great. So if it's your money, do you go for consistently good brand Y? Or do you go for brand X and hope you get a good one? I don't know what to say. It's your money. Personally, I'd probably go with brand Y, just to be the safe side, but I'm weird like that. All right? Now, suppose that one battery included in the set of data for brand Y is defective, and its lifespan is 0.5 years instead of 5.9. How would how this would or would not affect Pluto, Apollo's decision? How would this or would not? Uh, change. Apollo's decision. Sorry. Words. Yucky. Anyway, so if one of these, sorry, say the 5.9 is defective and it's 0 0.5, what's that going to do? Well, you realize that's going to change the average slightly, but it's really going to affect the range. So the mean drops, 
and range increases. Makes brand X more attractive. Now, once again, that's a judgment call. There's no correct answer. It's you choose an answer and you get the points or the value by justifying your answer. All right? Okay. Last question. How are we doing for time here? Oh, all right. I'm going to stop here. We'll do one more question, then hit the key ID. No, let's just do the questions. All right. Use the range of measures of central tendency mean, median, mode to compare the results for two math tests but given by Mr. S to the same class in the same semester. So, unit one test versus unit two test. So, need the mean, median, and mode. So, I'll do the unit one test. I'll pause the recording. You guys do the unit two test. Now, when I added all these numbers up, I got a mean of 71.8. The median was 73, and the mode was 73. Notice, got all these 73s here. Now I'm going to pause the recording. I want you guys to come and do the mean, median, mode for the unit 2 test, and we'll compare results, okay? Welcome back. For unit 2 test, the mean, median, mode should all be 73. Almost like I chose the numbers carefully so that you would get the same answer. Now, Note the unit 2 test it went from 98 to 41, much larger range, versus the unit 1 test, which went from 58 to 81, much smaller range. So if you were a student worried about your test marks, where would you feel more comfortable, the unit 1 test or the unit 2 test? Probably the unit 1, because much smaller range. Everybody passed. All right? Now, let's get this over with. Now, the key idea is what I've been trying to talk about today. Measures of central tendency, the mean, median, mode, are not always sufficient to represent a compare sets of data. Okay. You can draw inferences from numerical data by examining how the data is distributed around the mean or the median. All right. So this goes back here, particularly with the um, various companies here, the media company, the computer company, the auto company how the mean was and the was affected by the outliers. Yeah. Anyway, what else? OK, what you need to know, to compare sets of data, the data must be organized in a systematic way, in order. OK? And when analyzing two sets of data, it's important to look at both similarities and differences. Okay. How are they same? How are they different? All right? Now, that's it for me. If you've got any questions, shoot me an email. Otherwise, good luck.